We welcome you back inside the legendary Hammerstein Ballroom in Manhattan, New York for week four of the 2023 Cruiserweight Classic. Let's take a look at what happened seven nights ago right here in New York City. It was Tyler Bate, the big strong boy, taking on the submission specialist, Drew Gulak. A contrast of styles led to a very exciting matchup inside the squared circle. Drew Gulak almost picking up the victory on several occasions, pulling out a lot of the strikes, a lot of the power in his arsenal. But Tyler Bate reaching deep down the bag of tricks, taking things to the sky when need be. And off that spiral tap right to the rib cage of Drew Gulak, securing his spot in the quarterfinals. And also last week here in Manhattan, New York, one half of Los Lotharios, Humberto Carrillo taking on the human highlight reel Ricochet. And what an extraordinary battle this was, coming just seven nights after Angel Garza, the other half of Los Lotharios, had defeated Ricochet's tag team partner in Mustafa Ali. But in the end, Los Lotharios luck running out at least for one side as Ricochet picked up the victory and secured his spot in the quarterfinals of the CWC. Let's take a look at how the tournament has played out over the last three weeks. We started with 16, but tonight we finalized the final eight. The final two first round matches in the CWC happen live this afternoon. Monday Night Raw's Ilya Dragunov set to battle Friday Night SmackDown's Axiom in your main event of the first round. And also coming up in moments, the Iris Ace, JD McDonough, set to battle Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze. You want to talk about a contrast of styles? Look no further than these two men, set to lock horns in moments. Let's take a look at these two competitors set for your opening bout. The Iris Ace, JD McDonough, coming in tonight, standing 5'10, 180 pounds, fighting out of Ireland. And of course, a one time cruiserweight champion in his own right is JD McDonough. What about the opposer? That being Prince Pretty Tyler Breeze, coming in six foot tall. Of course, weighing in at the weight limit, 205 pounds is Tyler Breeze, fighting out of the North in Canada, and a one time NXT Tag Team Champion. Is the first of the two final first round matches in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Who is on their way to the quarters? We're gonna find out live this afternoon inside the Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York. And here comes competitor number one, Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze. The following is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from seasonal residencies. Weighing in at 212 pounds, Tyler Breeze. You know, the accomplishments for Tyler Breeze read one time NXT champion, but you were looking at the man, or I should say at least one of the men, who helped put the brand known as NXT on the map. Back in 2013, 2014, 2015, some of the emerging years of the career of Tyler Breeze. This man made evented several NXT takeovers, went toe to toe with some of the best of them, including Neville, Finn Balor, Sami Zayn, even Hall of Famer, Jushin Thunder Liger. Tyler Breeze has been in the ring with some of the absolute best from bell to bell, not just in WWE, but from all across the globe. And tonight, Tyler Breeze, a veteran of the squared circle, has a chance to add to his list of accolades. If he can move on, advance in the CWC, qualify for the quarterfinals, he will be one step closer to, of course, not only winning the entire tournament, but earning a future opportunity at the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Tyler Breeze, as we mentioned, a veteran of the ring, but still has a ton of years left in the tank. And tonight could be the start of a whole new opportunity in the career of Prince Pretty. But the man standing across from Tyler Breeze tonight, hungry for opportunity as well, the cold, calculated, and vicious Iris Ace. And his opponent from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland, weighing in at 180 pounds, J.D. McDonough. J.D. McDonough may be the hungriest man coming into this matchup. You remember just a few months ago on SmackDown, J.D. went one-on-one -on -one with the current Cruiserweight Champion Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight title. Unfortunately, McDonough coming up short on that night. 
So you gotta believe with McDonough having a recent opportunity at the gold and having it slip through his fingers, it's gotta be more hungry than ever to seize the opportunity tonight. Move one step closer to winning the entire tournament and move one step closer to becoming the number one contender. JD McDonough, so cold, so calculated, vicious, downright violent at times inside of the ring. Former Cruiserweight Champion, and that is for good reason. This is a man who took NXT UK during its time, as well as NXT by Storm, and now a part of SmackDown, is looking to do the same exact thing. We have two more first round matches in the CWC. We are gonna kick off the first one right now, here in Hammerstein Ballroom. Tyler Breeze, JD McDonough. The bell has sounded and we are underway. Of course, the quarterfinals gonna kick off next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time, and then just a few hours later, it'll be the No Mercy live premiere event from Baltimore, Maryland at 5 p.m. And then 24 hours after that, we are coming your way from Chicago for Monday Night Raw's Unforgiven. It's gonna be a busy weekend next week between the CWC, No Mercy, and Unforgiven. You're not gonna wanna be anywhere else but tuning into the action as JD McDonough takes down Tyler Breeze, trying to get things going in your opening bout. So to come tonight, we will see the invincible Ilya Dragunov, one of the two Monday Night Raw participants in this tournament, taking on SmackDown's Axiom. McDonough going for an early cover here. Gets the two, but Tyler Breeze pops the shoulder off the canvas. Of course, the other Monday Night Raw participant in this tournament being the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, did advance last week, as you saw moments ago. Meanwhile, J.D. McDonough knocking Tyler Breeze off the apron. That's a hard fall to take early on in this matchup. Not going to play into the endurance factor of Prince Pretty, and neither is that suicide dive right to the heart of Tyler Breeze. We mentioned it before, we'll say it again. Tyler Breeze has been in the ring with some of the all-time greats, but has he been in the ring most recently with some of the young and hungry talent in the WWE locker room? J.D. McDonough wants that opportunity quite possibly more than anybody tonight. He's been waiting for this opportunity for months on end, and after seeing the championship so close, yet so far, the opportunity slipped through his fingers a few months ago on SmackDown. McDonough wants his piece of the pie tonight. Now off the apron, taking down Tyler Breeze, and Breeze has got no answer for the Irish ace, J.D. McDonough. Kind of eight, Tyler Breeze needs to hustle up and get back inside between the ropes, but he's met with a ripcord knee, and that could be all she wrote. Oh, only a one count there. Hammerstein ballroom coming unglued. J.D. McDonough trying to disinfigurate the Prince Pretty looks of Tyler Breeze off that knee and a forearm for good measures. Going for the boot right to the rib cage. This is some of the cold and calculated offense that we discussed out of McDonough. Lot of strikes, lot of hard hits. And also not afraid to take things to the air as it looks like JD McDonough may be doing here as he has been in control the last number of minutes. And off of the middle rope, off of Brett's rope, delivering the forearm right to the good looks of Prince Pretty. Tyler Breeze is in trouble. He's got to get the train back on the tracks. But J.D. McDonough is going to have a field day picking apart Tyler Breeze until he eventually gets the three count. But there's the comeback by Tyler Breeze, showing some signs of life. A beautiful, beautiful tornado DDT in front of a crowd that certainly appreciates it. Tyler Breeze trying to get things going. Tried to go for the cover to no avail, but sends J.D. McDonough into the ropes. Drop down, leapfrog, nice elbow, keeping it simple yet effective there, and also outrunning J.D. McDonough here tonight. Don't turn your back on the Irish ace, however, stack it up. Prince Pretty into the bridge. Well, beautiful pinfall there, but not the beautiful ending J.D. McDonough was looking for. Oh, look at that, look at that! Takedown into the double stomp. Tyler Breeze showed some signs of life, but J.D. McDonough flipped the switch in a matter of moments and is back in control of this first round match. This has certainly been a showcase of the Irish ace since the opening bell. Tyler Breeze rolling to the outside, trying to create some distance between him and his opposer. 
As this fight continues, you gotta wonder if endurance is gonna play a factor. And if this pace keeps up and JD just keeps his foot on the gas pedal, how much longer can Tyler Breeze last in this match? Breeze on the outside and JD McDonough is he going for the count out here? I'm not sure if it, it might be a little too early for a count out victory. And I think this might be a mistake. Allowing the veteran of the matchup some time to breathe. We'll what, see if JD McDonough comes back to haunt him right there. But there's the German into the bridge. And Breeze gets the shoulder up again. I wonder if JD McDonough needed that pause to try to recalculate his next move. He's up against the ropes again. Now what has JD got in mind? Sends him into the ropes, and McDonough, he's just picking apart Tyler Breeze right now. You know, JD McDonough may be the cruiserweight division version, cruiserweight division version, excuse me, of Randy Orton. Just cold, just calculated, just picks apart his opponents. Tyler Breeze right now trying to turn the tides. Off the DDT, wait a minute. Could be going for the unprettier. A la Christian Cage into the cover. Will that do it? Oh, he almost had him there. Tyler Breeze went for the kill when he saw the window of opportunity open and went for the beauty shot, but not to be delivered on time. Over here singing the praises of JD McDonough, comparing him to Randy Orton in a sense when it comes to his arsenal inside of the ring and certainly his attitude. Meanwhile, Tyler Breeze turned the tides. The unprettier went for the beauty shot to no avail. And once again, JD McDonough in the snap of the fingers is back in control. Uranagi! Breeze has got to get back into this. But has he already thrown his best shots at JD McDonough? As we saw two signs of life, but to no avail. We said it before, we'll say it again. This has been a showcase of JD McDonough in this opening matchup. Tyler Breeze may just be delaying the inevitable right now. There's a reversal there. It's gonna be a misstep by McDonough. Crash that center of the ring, and JD once again stacking up Breeze. Hops the shoulder off the canvas. I do not know if Tyler Breeze was expecting this level of fight from McDonough here tonight. Did he underestimate him coming into this matchup? All remains to be seen. We keep fighting till we hear a bell, and once again, McDonough going back to the well with what works, with the soles of the boots on the rib cage of T. Breezy. Now on the apron, Tyler Breeze trying to create some distance, playing a game of cat and mouse with JD McDonough. And Breeze caught him off guard. Here we go. Tyler Breeze starting to get rolling here. Cross body to the outside, and McDonough is down. It's now or never. Tyler Breeze needs to start mounting some momentum in this match. McDonough back inside the squared circle. Tyler Breeze slow to capitalize, however. Gotta wonder if that is gonna play a factor into this matchup as Breeze comes back into the ring and JD McDonough lying in wait for the opponent. Send him Breeze into the corner, nobody home, and Tyler Breeze stacking up JD McDonough in the corner. McDonough on the ropes, Tyler Breeze now, looking for one final blow. You notice Tyler Breeze not going for the cover right now, realizes he needs to inflict some punishment on the Irish Ace before he could try to gain a victory tonight. McDonough on spaghetti legs. Breeze with another crossbody from the top. And will that do it? Into the cover. Dead center of the canvas. Oh man, that was close. That was a close call. Came from the top of the crossbody. McDonough gets the shoulder up at 2.5. Another back body drop by JD. Tyler Breeze once again started climbing the rugs of the ladder to gain momentum in this match. But JD McDonough stopping him in his tracks. Now sending Breeze to the outside. Absolutely brutal. And what has McDonough got in mind? Could be going for that double stop. Oh man! Tyler Breeze sidestepped it. JD McDonough landed on his feet, but barely. He might have broken an ankle off that. Nobody home. JD McDonough soles of his feet on the floor of Hammerstein Ballroom. 
And Tyler Breeze realizes that JD is in pain. That may be the deciding factor of this matchup. As you see, Breeze is starting to work on those legs right now. A mistake by JD McDonough. He might have taken himself out in this contest. Breeze getting back into the ring. Could be going for the count out or could just be trying to gain some rest here. Rest and recuperate in the midst of this first round battle. JD back inside of the ring, collar and elbow. JD gets the best of it. McDonough just gonna keep swinging, man. Gotta give the kid credit. Breeze back into the ring. JD goes for the drop kick to no avail. Tyler Breeze from behind. Neckbreaker. <laughs> Tyler Breeze may have an answer. Or not, as the rug gets pulled out from underneath of him. Oh, now McDonough going back to the top rope. His legs have got to be in pain, but he's going to fight through it and delivers the double stomp to the rib cage. Breeze is down. And wait a minute, JD's going back to the top. He's going for it a second time. Squashing Tyler Breeze between the soles of his boots and the canvas underneath of him. Oh, now JD McDonough, this is a smart decision. Absolutely squash the rib cage. Take the breath out of the lungs of Tyler Breeze and now try to stretch him out. Get him to give up. Get him to tap. Pass out. Whatever the decision, just try to win this matchup. But will Tyler Breeze hold on? Tyler Breeze may be fading. JD McDonough's only got so much life left in him to hold this maneuver. It's not an easy task on the other side of the ring either as Tyler Breeze with a counter. With a nice takedown. Oh, Breeze could have been going for a super kick there. JD McDonough is still coming on glued. Breeze doesn't have an answer right now, but JD McDonough has got plenty of them. That's going to do it. Into the cover. No! Tyler Breeze is going to keep swinging until the cows come home. But JD McDonough, eyes locked sharp on Prince Pretty. Smells blood in the water. Going for that same Death Valley driver variant again. And that'll do it. A showcase of athletic ability and certainly a showcase of that cold-hearted son of a bitch, JD McDonough. Tyler Breeze put up a fight, but in the end, the Irish Ace is coming out on top. What a matchup. Here is your winner, JD McDonough. Well, there you see the updated bracket as Tyler Breeze's name fades to dust and JD McDonough becomes participant number seven in the quarterfinals of the CWC. But coming up in moments, the final first round match of the Cruiserweight Classic as SmackDown's Axiom battles Monday Night Raw's invincible Ilya Dragunov. Who is going to get eight, the spot of eight in the CWC? But as for this opening contest, the Iris Ace, J.D. McDonough, absolutely showcasing his talents in the middle of Hammerstein Ballroom. Tyler Breeze put up a fight, but in the end, McDonough was too much for Prince Pretty to handle. Spot number seven of eight goes to the Iris Ace. It is coming your way next Saturday night at 5 p.m. Eastern time. It is a live premiere, the SmackDown exclusive live event in Baltimore. No Mercy. And sign for the No Mercy event. Two former tag team partners, two former friends collide as the ballsy badass Shotzi looks to finally cut the ties with the EST Bianca Belair. After Guther put Johnny Gargano through an announce table several weeks ago, this six-man tag team matchup has been signed. But the interesting factor, Johnny Gargano's tag team partners, one of them being his upcoming opponent in the quarterfinals of the CWC in Dominic Mysterio. It is a David vs. Goliath rematch as the Nigerian Giant Omas is set to lock horns with the one and only Ricochet. Ricochet won before, can he do it again at no mercy? The Cruiserweight Championship set to be defended as the Emperor of Lucha Libre, Santos Escobar, puts the gold on the line against number one contender from Alpha Academy, Chad Gable. Speaking of number one contenders, Candice LeRae outlasted seven other women in an over-the-top rope battle royal. Now she gets her opportunity. She will meet the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, for the WWE 
Women's Championship. All the gold will be on the line as the United States title is up for grabs. The American Nightmare Cody Rhodes defends the red, white, blue, and gold against meaner than evil, Grom Breaker. And as announced late last night, the main event of No Mercy, five-man elimination match. AJ Styles, Austin Theory, Edge, Randy Orton, and Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. Five all-stars, one ring, one winner, one big gold belt. And then just 24 hours later, we're coming to you from Chicago for the Monday Night Raw exclusive Unforgiven event. And what a loaded night of action with a lot of bad blood and animosity in the Monday Night Raw locker room. A few weeks ago, Carmelo Hayes defeating Bobby Lashley, but he had his feet on the ropes to do it. Bobby Lashley wants to run things back with the IT superstar himself in Chicago. Intercontinental Championship on the line in a triple threat match. L.A. Knight defends the gold against Cedric Alexander and Sami Zayn. Who will leave Chicago holding the Intercontinental title? You want to talk bad blood? Look no further than this Falls Count Anywhere collision between the street champ Sol Sokoa and the Blackheart Tommaso Ciampa. It's the rubber match and God damn it, something's got to give. A WrestleMania rematch that Becky Lynch has been waiting months for. No title or not. Bragging rights are certainly on the line. The man, Becky Lynch, one-on-one -on -one with the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. The WWE World Tag Team titles to be decided as Damian Priest and Finn Balor put the gold on the line against the Brawling Brutes, Ridge the Fridge Holland, and the Bruiserweight Butch. What a mean tag team match that's going to be. Is a personal vendetta inside the steel cage. The beast incarnate, the alpha male, Brock Lesnar versus the original bro, Matt Riddle. My goodness, what a fight awaits these two competitors. And in the main event, the WWE title on the line. The Celtic warrior Sheamus seeks retribution against Seth Rollins, but he may just be leaving Chicago, Illinois as the WWE champion of Monday Night Raw. And coming your way next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic begin. Angel Garza of Los Lotharios set to go one-on-one -on -one with former NXT Heritage Cup winner Nathan Frazier. And moments ago, we saw the Irish ace J.D. McDonough pick up the victory. But who is going to meet him in the quarterfinals next week? Will it be Axiom or will it be Ilya Dragunov? We're going to find that out in moments here in Manhattan. Let's take a look at the two members of our main event, the Invincible Ilya Dragunov coming into this matchup, standing 5'10", 187 pounds, fighting all the way out of Russia. And of course, Ilya Dragunov still pretty hot off the heels of an historic Intercontinental Championship reign on Raw. And his opponent from SmackDown, Axiom, standing 5'8", 154 pounds, fighting out of Spain. And of course, another former NXT Heritage Cup winner, Actually, the first one to ever hold that trophy. It's Axiom and Dragunov up next here in Hammerstein Ballroom. This is the final first round match of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Seven spots of eight have been filled, but who will secure position number eight? We will find out in moments as Axiom makes his way down the aisle. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Madrid, Spain. Weighing in at 154 pounds, Axiom. Axiom, one of the newest and brightest stars to Friday Night SmackDown, but is yet to really seize an opportunity. But tonight could be the night to change the momentum of Axiom's career on the blue brand. Certainly a tall task ahead of the first ever NXT Heritage Cup winner in Axiom as he goes one-on-one -on -one with a former NXT United Kingdom champion and most recently a former Intercontinental Champion in Monday Night Raw's Invincible, Ilya Dragunov. Nonetheless, win, lose, or draw, this is going to be a great matchup on both ends of the spectrum. Of course, the winner will meet J.D. McDonough next Saturday afternoon in the first quarterfinal matchup of the CWC. And one of two Monday Night Raw participants in this tournament making their entrance in Hammerstein. Tyler Bate had success last week. Will Ilya Dragunov follow as we get set for this first round collision? And his opponent from Moscow, Russia, weighing in at 187 pounds, Ilya Dragunov. 
Ilya Dragunov has already had an incredible year, becoming one of the faces of Monday Night Raw. He took the red brand by storm, waltzed into WrestleMania back in February, and kicked off his Intercontinental Championship reign. A reign that took Dragunov through defenses, successful ones at that, over names like Shinsuke Nakamura, Tyler Bate himself, Apollo Crews, Xavier Woods, and more. Dragunov, of course, felt the expiration date on that reign back in July at Money in the Bank in a classic battle against the defiant LA Knight. Ilya Dragunov now looks to a new opportunity. Fit in the weight class of the cruiserweight division, he looks to become one of eight in the quarterfinals of the CWC. And just imagine if Dragunov can become the number one contender in the near future for the cruiserweight championship. A whole lot of writing on each and every matchup. And here we go with your final first round match in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. The first round set to close, but who is going to make their way to the quarters? Starting next week, it's Axiom. It is Dragunov. It's Manhattan, New York, Hammerstein Ballroom. The lights are all bright in the Big Apple, and we are underway. Once again, the winner of this matchup meets the winner. I should say, excuse me, meets the winner from earlier tonight in J.D. McDonough. Really put on a showcase against Tyler Breeze earlier this evening. Nonetheless, Dragunov starting to unload on Axiom in the early going. It has been well documented. Ilya Dragunov, one of the toughest superstars in the Monday Night Raw locker room without a shadow of a doubt. As Axiom, however, going to take things to the air. As that is certainly his strong suit flying all around the sky using the ropes to his advantage. As we see right here, beautiful step up Tornado DDT. Very creative out of the arsenal of Axiom. And he comes through the ropes with a tope suicida. Axiom no stranger to taking things to the sky. And if any match called for it, it is certainly the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. Ilya Dragunov hot out of the gate. Oh man, Dragunov is going early with these strikes in the corner. Couple of lariats squashing Axiom up against the turnbuckles. Yeah, these two men coming to this matchup shot out of the cannon. That bell rang, what, just over a minute ago? They've been back and forth ever since. Axiom down, Dragunov going to the top rope. Not familiar, but certainly no stranger. Dropping the elbow on the spine of Axiom. Going for the early pinfall. We're gonna take more to keep that young man from Spain down. Ilya Dragunov, as we just mentioned, former Intercontinental Champion, one of the faces of Monday Night Raw without a doubt. Without the championship or not, Dragunov has become one of the names associated with the red brand. Looking to etch his name in history starting tonight as a possible future winner of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Or could it be the young and exciting Axia with a pop-up dropkick takes Dragunov off his feet. Coming your way next Saturday afternoon, shortly after the Cruiserweight Classic, it is no mercy at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and then just 24 hours later, 5 p.m. as well next Sunday night, it'll be unforgiven. Cannot wait to get the next weekend. It is going to be live premiere after live premiere. Tons of action that you're not going to want to miss. Axiom sending Dragunov on the ring apron and snaps the neck on the top rope. That's a long fall down to the floor for the Invincible One. Dragunov on spaghetti legs right now. Axiom, I don't know if he's pondering to probably take things to the air again. They don't call it high risk, high reward for no reason, but took too long to make a decision. Ilya Dragunov gonna bring him outside the hard way. Dragunov not afraid for an old scrap around ringside, that's for sure, as he just gets sent into the barricade. Dragunov down, is Dragunov out. Meanwhile, Axiom, Oh man, off the apron, not even utilizing the ropes that time. Just a standing moonsault, shot out like a bullet, taking down Dragunov. Now Axiom again off the apron. Axiom's best strong suit, if you will, his ace in the hole in this match is certainly going to be his speed and his agility and his willingness to throw caution in the wind. Ilya Dragunov is known for his strikes, is known for his toughness, is known for his resilience. Who's going to have the better hand? And who is going to make it to the quarterfinals tonight? Into the bridge by Axiom. Will that do it? Gets the two, but Dragunov pops his shoulder up. And great contest just a few minutes into things. 
We want to thank you for joining us for the fourth Saturday afternoon in a row here in Manhattan, New York, Hammerstein Ballroom. It's been an amazing first round of the Cruiserweight Classic, but the quarterfinals kick off next week as we move into the semis, the finals. Still four more weeks of this amazing tournament to go as Axiom now off the top rope from the heavens with the crossbody. Ilya Dragunov has been on the receiving end time and time again over the last few minutes of those high-risk maneuvers by Axiom, and they have all worked out in the favor of that young man who climbs the ropes again and hits another crossbody, this time dead center of the canvas. It goes for the pinfall there, but it's only a one. And that just speaks to the toughness and the resilience of the invincible Ilya Dragunov. There's a reason he held the Intercontinental Championship from WrestleMania to Money in the Bank of this year and had many of defenses all the way through. Now Axiom, nice takeover into the bridge. Axiom is looking good in this matchup. Dare I say, it's a little bit of a parallel to what we saw moments ago with JD McDonough controlling most of that match against Tyler Breeze. Will it be the same result here? Ilya Dragunov trying to make sure it is not the same result. Couple of lariats. Not enough enthusiasm behind him to keep Axiom down, but certainly that kick underneath the ring, I should say underneath the foot of Dragunov, enough to keep Axiom down at least for the moment. Now Ilya starting to unload. So then Axiom into the ropes and a high knee. High knee, almost Triple H-esque. Now a boot, Dragunov is a scrapper inside of that ring. Hard hitting, tough as nails. It's a fight from pillar to post anytime you meet the invincible one inside the confines of the ropes. Axiom is finding out firsthand right now. Tries to roll to the outside. See Ilya Dragunov, he had it scouted. He already followed Axiom out there, not giving him a second to breathe. And a power bomb on the outside of the ring. My goodness. This absolute berserker. The invincible Ilya Dragunov. This is a man who defeated, oh man. Oh, what an overhead throw. This is a man who once ended the 870 day reign of Guther for the NXT United Kingdom Championship. Dragunov has been in the main event. He's been in the spotlight. He's been under pressure many a times throughout his career and he has succeeded. But Axiom trying to make sure tonight is not one of those nights. Heading to the top, Dragunov trying to run away, but Axiom found him with the axe hammer. Another great contest on hand as the entire Cruiserweight Classic has been thus far. Dragunov is dazed in the corner. Axiom moving him right into position. There's not much Dragunov can do about it. Oh, wait a minute, I think we know what comes next. Axiom loves to utilize the Spanish fly from the heavens. And into the cover, looking for a wrap. But Ilya Dragunov kicks that again. Axiom throwing everything in the kitchen sink at the man they call the Invincible One. But Dragunov continues to persevere. Oh, look at this. Going for the running sit-out powerbomb is Ilya Dragunov. Some power deep in the arsenal. Axiom up but only by force of the Invincible One. Into the ropes again, and another high knee! Enough to knock anybody out. Axiom is gonna feel that one on Sunday morning, that's for damn sure. Oh man, Dragunov starting to have his way with Axiom. Ragged on him with those chops to the chest. Now wait a minute, Ilya Dragunov with Manhattan, New York behind him, loaded up for the headbutt, the torpedo. Shot out from a cannon into the cover. And Ilya Dragunov is going to the quarterfinals. What a matchup between Axiom and Ilya Dragunov here tonight in Manhattan, New York. Axiom took things to the sky time and time again, but it was the hard hitting perseverance of Ilya Dragunov that secured the Here's victory. And there you see the bracket, and there you see 16 has officially become eight participants. The quarterfinal round is set for the CWC. And it all kicks off next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time. The Irish ace, J.D. McDonough, 
battles Monday Night Raw's Invincible Ilya Dragunov. And also coming your way at 3 p.m. Eastern Time next Saturday afternoon, one half of Los Lotharios, Angel Garza, battles a former NXT Heritage Cup winner in Nathan Frazier all the way from the UK. The quarterfinal round is set for the CWC and it all begins next Saturday afternoon right here in Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York, 3 p.m. Eastern Time to be followed by No Mercy 24 hours later by Unforgiven. Next weekend is going to be a weekend we don't forget for a long, long time. Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week. Face on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat, gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap, I'm a rock.